Hello, my fellow chatterers and book lovers, and anyone else who's popped in because you're curious about what this is, we've got a bit lost. Welcome, everyone. I am Chatty, and welcome to my channel, Chatty the Mad Chatter, where I am going to be chatting away madly and playing my July Book Lads and Bookworms TBR game. So this time it is going to be very much focused on a middle grade because I want to pick out a pile of possibilities to make up my potential journeyathon TBR. If you are not sure what Journeyathon is, it is a readathon I have created around maps um, and reading one middle grade book. If you want to read adult and YA age ranges, that is absolutely fine, but you have to read one middle grade book. And if you want more information, provided my computer has not completely broken down, so I've got to upload on my phone, I will put the link to the Journeyathon announcement here. If nothing is coming up as you're watching this, it will be in the description box so you can access it that way. So, newbies to the game, I'm going to go through the rules. People who've been here before, you can skip ahead because there are timestamps and you can just find out what the different colours are going to mean for this round. Okay, hi newbies or people that just enjoy watching rules because you find it fun. I, I'm very happy for you. I don't mind that you're continuing to hear me talk about the rules of this game because it probably changes every time <laughs> because I haven't done my gimmick. So let's get that. Um, on this channel, newbies, I do not edit my videos because my laptop is very, very ancient and so it's just one take and I only had the power of pause to help me. So cheers everybody. Clink, clink, clink. So on with the rules of the game. So in a nutshell, it is basically snakes and ladders where you go up ladders from the thick bit da, 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 and you go down worms. Um, from the head to the tail and I have ladder prompts and I have worm prompts that mean different things and I also have the ones in between which are the colours and they also mean different things as well but I change those every month just to keep it fun for me and to give me more control over what I feel like doing this month. Um, so I start off in the middle and I can choose where to start from so with my first roll of the dice I can decide which direction to go in as to which prompt I want to do. And then that sets it in stone. So I'm either moving either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Did not just destroy my game there. I didn't, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, so that's that one. And then once we move on to the second or the third square, I then use two dice for that one. Uh, there's no end point because I can just keep going. I, I just made the layout how it is so we could have some travelling with the ladders and the worms. Um, I'm still in the process of colouring it in. As you can see, we have this sort of disappearing off into space section here where there is missing and I haven't coloured my blue sections in for this last one here. But um, it's a work in progress and it is slowly getting done. No work has been done this last month. It is exactly the same as, as it was for my June TBR. But that's because I've been doing a load of journeyathon stuff instead, so I'm not going to worry about it. So let me go into a little bit more detail about what the different prompts are within this game. Okay, so the worrying worm prompts are these cards here, and all of the prompts on those are a lot more difficult to do. So it goes a lot more specific, such as you have to read a, a you have to read like a set number of pages, or you have to read. Um, for example, like a book that is mainly whatever colour I pick, like red. So the whole, the main colour of the cover would have to be red. Whereas my regular prompts, which look like this, um, they are kind of not as challenging. So if I got choose a colour on the cover, as long as it had something on that cover that was that colour, that would count. But the worrying worm, it has to be the main colour of the cover. Um, and then to balance that out, I have my lucky ladders, which look like this. Um, so with Lucky Ladders, what I am doing with those is that it's a much more kind of vague and nicer prompt. So things like uh, choose a book with a beautiful cover or choose a book that you are most anticipating. So just kind of like nicer ones. So ladders are great, worms are, we don't want to land on them. So amongst those, so I have about sort of 10 different options, but I always pick three, I pick two cards for the possibilities. And then I always have these specific two, which is for the worrying worms, it is the one ring based on Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all. 
And for the Lucky Ladders, I have the Fiegel card based on the Nag McFiegels from Terry Pratchett's Tiffany Aiken series. So with the one ring, why this is a really tricky, challenging, slightly scary prompt is that if you, the viewer, um, are the first to write one ring, should I pick this card out? If you're the first one to write one ring in the comments section, you may pick whatever book you would like me to read. Just pick that book and I will read it. Unless I really can't get hold of it, it's ridiculously expensive. <laughs> Otherwise I won't read it. Um, other than that, I, gen I generally will read it. Um, the Fee Girl, they are well known for their drinking, fighting and stealing. Um, I get to steal a book from under my bed. So under my bed, when I buy books, they go under my bed and I have to earn them for healthy points. So unless I specifically said this is a gift to myself, but generally they go under the bed. So I can't get them until I've earned them. So it's like my motivation to try and be kind to myself physically and mentally. Not going so well at the moment, but we're working on it. So with if I pull out the Fiegel card, I just get to have a book. They don't have to, I don't have to earn it. I can just get a book out from under my bed, but I do have to read it that month. Otherwise it has to go back. So that is those cards. So I'm just going to pick out my three. Picking out my three for the Worrying Worms. So I'm going to go there and I will pick out my three for the Lucky Ladders and put the Fiegel in. So shuffle them up so I don't know which one's a Fiegel and which one isn't. And the same with the Worms and Ladders. Okay. Right. Um, I am going to be doing some regular ones that I do um, this month <laughs> i'm gonna say week I'm not doing this weekly um so i will be doing the 30 seconds prompt um so 30 seconds prompt i pick one of my prompt cards so, so my normal prompts and i have 30 seconds to pick a book and i'm also doing theme cards um so for theme cards i have to pick one of these cards and they will have um something like um people or magic or fire and then I would have to pick a book with something around the theme of for example fire in the title or on the front cover so you know if I've got a book with the campfire on it or if I pick for example the fire on high then that would count for that so that is those I think that's everything for genetic rules I feel like I've gone through it so much quicker today than I usually do but I, that's a good thing we've just minimized the waffle for once and um, so I'm going to invite everyone else to come back who have watched this many many times and don't need to hear the rules because we are going to be going through what this month's prompts are for the colors so hello everyone who has come back to join us I realized I didn't do my gimmick so if you like my little teacup here it is clink 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 cheers so I am doing theme cards for pink. Also, thank you everyone who voted for these. I said I was going to be doing 30 seconds prompts and got you to choose the other three. And this is the result. So thank you, everybody. Um, so I will be doing 30 second prompt if I land on green. Um, if you've forgotten what that is, people, you will have to go back to the rules because I've just explained it to everyone. Um, theme card is pink. And um, this was one of the more popular ones um, from the votes. Um, a new one now, we have the Journeyathon map mashup. So this is my Journeyathon map with all the possible paths on it. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna land on two places and get there via two paths. So I will generate two different prompts. I will mash up those prompts together. So I have to read a book that covers those prompts. So for example, um, prologue on the prompt is to read a book um, with a mode of transport on the cover. And if I take uh, the uh, walking path to Smoky Mushroom, I would have to read a book with something cosmic in the title. So I would have to read a book that had some way of some way of transporting yourself um, on the cover, as well as having something cosmic in the title. So that would have to be the book. So this could be quite challenging. We will see how it goes. <laughs> I may regret doing this, but it feels like it will be fun. So we're, we're putting it in. And I am definitely going to play it at least once. So if I do all my rolls and I haven't done it, I'll do another one so I can do that one. Um, and the final one that just snuck in there, uh, beating out the, uh, the goals, was series spin. So this is where I have a spinner dial and I have 
four different series that I'm in the middle of and it will choose which one to continue with. So that is all the prompts. I'm just going to have some tea now. And then we'll start off with the first roll. Um, but what this is, I'm not going to be, this is not, uh, I have to read every book on here. What I'm doing is I'm going to make a pile of possibilities. So we're going to do eight rolls. So I'm going to have a pile of eight books. And from those eight books, I will choose four of them that I have to read for Journeyathon. But it's going to be more kind of, as I go along, I'm not going to decide which those four will be. So it's just generating a pile of possibilities. And I need to read four of them for Journeyathon. That is what we're hoping for here. Um, I don't have any punishments or rewards because they didn't do a TBR in May. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, but the outcome of July will affect my reading for September. Um, and so my aim is to read four of these books I pick. But I also have to, um, what's the word? I have to put them on Storygraph. So they, I have to like review them and put them on Storygraph because I really want to do that more. And um, so if I haven't done that with four of the books I've read from here, I do not, I will, it will not be a reward for me. It will be a punishment in September. Okay, I was enough talking. Let's do the first roll. Okay, so I have my Chatty the Mad Chatter logo as my counter. Because why not try out some branding while well, you can? And I have a green dice to roll. Into the bowl it goes. And it is a two. Two. Wonderful. So let's see all the different ways we could go. So coming out the pink way, I could do one, two, and be a blue, because that's a worm tail. Um, one, two, I could get a green. Um, oh, so lots of options here. One, I could get a yellow, I could get a ladder, I could get another green, I could get a worm. We're definitely not going that way. Uh, I could get another ladder and I could get a blue. Um, but I'm here to do journeyathon, so I am going to start off by choosing yellow. So I'm going to go one, two, anti-clockwise is what I've chosen, and we're going to do uh, the journeyathon prompt. Okay, let's do the first roll for journeyathon. It is a four. <laughs> so if I take the magic path, I could do one two, three, four, so it'd be City of Party, choose a middle grade, which is nice and easy, but let's see what other ones I get. So for the Earth Path, it would be one, two, three, four, so it would be Observatory Towers. Uh, the Water Path would be one, two, three, four, so it'd be Whittleway Village, and the what I've done on air would be one, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got either City of Party, which is reader middle grade, Observatory Towers via land, um, Whittleway Village via water, and the Grombies via air. So let's see what they all mean, because I cannot remember off the top of my head. So I have it all in my wonderful Journey of Notebook, which is from Laura Ellen Anderson's uh, artwork, Amelia Fang and Rainbow Grey. Love them. Okay, so the first one. So Observatory Towers is a book with an animal companion or an animal on the cover. Okay, hostel. Um, and the all of this, though, it just depends what is matched with it. But if I can't think of a book that even has an animal companion in it or on the cover, then it would be stupid to choose that one. Um, but I think I can. I'm, I'll look at the books in a moment. So the, what was the other one? Oh, Whittleway Village. So Whittleway Village um, via the sea path was a reader TBR vet. Okay. Um, I'd say I've probably got two that I'd count as a TBR vet that I'm wanting to read. So maybe not that one because it's given me more limited options. Um, and the Grombies via air was um read a magical book i've got loads of magical books we're going air grumbies okay cool that was nice and easy <laughs> okay so the first one i chose was the grumbies via the air path so i'm now on the grumbies and i'll do a second roll to mash it up with five okay so air would be 
one, start again, two, three, four, five. Takes us back to the grom beat, so we're not doing that because there's no mashing whatsoever. Okay, via the C, one, two, three, four, five. So we'd have four theatrics, which is a series. So magical book in a series. Um, land is one, two, three, four, five. So that is something cosmic in the title. <laughs> Um, I do I even have anything I want to read that's cosmic in the title. I'll have a look in a moment. Oh, I do, but it's not magical. So I'm probably not going to choose that one. The moment I'm looking, um, the second one being the Boardwalk theatrics one. Um, magic, I'm just going to go straight to the City of Party because that's a portal. So that would be one, two, three, four. So that would be Camp Launchpad, which would be Magical Artifact which I do have a book in mind for that. So may, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the magic path. So the second one, I'm going to do camp launch pad, which is the magical path. Okay, this is a very long winded first prompt, but I'm having fun and hopefully you are as well. Um, so I chose both, um, I chose the air path, traveling via broomstick to the Grombies. Um, and that was to read a magical book. And I've got to mash that up with the magic path where I chose portal travel to get to camp launch pad where I have to read a book with a magical artifact. So a magical book with a magical artifact works together perfectly. And the one that I had in my head as soon as that was mentioned was A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. So this is the second book in the Pinch of Magic series and it is a fantasy middle grade and it follows the Widdisham sisters. Um, I also love this cover. We have this um, boat that is sort of, I can't decide if it's sinking or if it's just going over a wave, but we've got all these wonderful like teals and blues in the sea in front. We've got an octopus. Um, we have these little objects around. So we have a magical artifact here, which are these Russian dolls. We also have a compass, which is great to have on a Jennyathon book. Um, and then we have um, the three sisters pictured around as well. I just think it's really cool. And on the back, we have a cauldron. So this looks really fun. Um, do we have a map inside? Because it's always fun to see a map. No map for this one. We had a map in the last book. Oh, we do. It's there. It's on printed on the um, back of the cover. So we have a map there of the islands. Is this different? Oh, yes. This is different. Okay, so we have a more expanded map for this world. So this is exciting. Um, I buddy read A Pinch of Magic with my mum, Natta. I'm very keen to continue the series because I hear so many, so many good things about it. I know it's absolutely beloved by Verdania Silverscribe, who is uh, my middle grade book reading buddy. Um, so I'm very keen to crack on with this series. So yay, that's the first book. Let's do the second roll. <laughs> okay, roll number two. We are still on the middle square, but we are going anti-clockwise. So just the one dice and I have landed on a five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. And we are on green. And I can't recall what green was. So let's go and see what it is. Why did I pick the phone up first rather than pausing? We don't know. I've just seen what green was and you'll all be happy, but I'm nervous. It is the 30 second prompt. Okay, so choosing middle grade, choosing a middle grade book. I would like to have in my pile of possibilities and I have 30 seconds to choose it and I am picking a quick shuffle just one two okay I'm going to be choosing this one we're on 57 58 59 30 seconds okay uh, expanding my horizons book with the LGBTQ plus protagonist of own voice author I have one but I don't own it so I'm choosing Jamie by LD Lipinski and I just paused. I was like, I need to stop the timer. I didn't need to do that. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with, with like, I think I had several seconds to spare. I think I only used half my time. Um, so that was a straightforward one because I knew I do not have any more, unless I'm rereading something, I don't have any, any books um, on my list of middle grade um, that I own. But I do have two in mind. One is under my bed. So I'm holding that back in case it's the fever one. But I know I do really want to read Jamie but I'm on a book buying ban, so I have to make sure I hit that so I can buy Jamie because I want to buy Jamie. I don't want to get Jamie out of the library because I really want to read it. 
What is Jamie, you might be asking? Jamie is a contemporary middle grade about a non-binary child called Jamie. And Jamie is at the age of choosing a secondary school, which is a difficult time for a child. Especially difficult if you live somewhere where if you are a boy, you go to the boys' secondary school, and if you are a girl, you go to the girls' secondary school. So they have gendered secondary schools where Jamie comes from, but as Jamie is non-binary, they do not fit in either the boy or girl one, because they are non-binary. So I'm really excited to read this. Um, L.D. Lipinski is a non-binary author, so I'm really keen to read Own Voices. The front cover looks beautiful, the story sounds great, and I hear amazing things about L.D. Lipinski's writing. So I'm really keen to read that. So I'm going to get a placeholder for Jamie, so I know that I've got another book in my pile. Okay, roll number three is a, can you see, six. So we are moving six anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, so close. Six, we are on blue. Nearly got a ladder and got off the first square, but we are on blue. So I landed on blue and blue is the series spin. So I'm gonna choose the book series that I'm currently reading. Uh, in the middle of and then spin a spinner to see which one I'm going to be continuing with. Um, obviously Spring Club Sorcery is out because I've already got that one so not going to be continuing with that. Um, one I definitely do want to be reading, nope picked the wrong book, let's try that again, it's this one. Um, so this is the fourth book in the Unmapped Chronicles by Avi Elphinstone um, called The Dra Crackle Dawn Dragon which I'm also hoping to buddy read with Vidania from Vidania Silverscribe. So this is going to be option one. Um, what other series? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, I have, let me stretch. Please don't all, it's going to collapse and fall. I'm going to have to stand up. Ouch. Okay, great. I, I have um, Onyeka and the Rise of the Rebels, continuing the Onyeka series by Tolo Okaguri. And I'm so excited for this one. I really wanted to read it last month, but I lost when I was doing part of my June TBR game, so I didn't, I couldn't read it. Um, so this one is my second choice. So I need two more. Um, okay, so again, I'm worried that I'm gonna knock books over. No, I'm not staying. <laughs> I'm going to rejig some books here, move you all up. Okay, there we go. Right. So option number three is um, the next Percy Jackson book I need to read is Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. Uh, this is a reread of the series for me. I really love Percy Jackson and I'm having a lot of fun rereading it, <laughs> but it's taken me a long time because there's just so many other books I want to read. So Battle of the Labyrinth will be my next one. And finally, again, I'm going to choose a book I don't actually own, um, but it's on my <laughs> when I can buy books again <laughs> list. Um, so this is the Lizzie and Bell Mysteries. This is the first book, Drama and Danger by, L um, by J.T. Williams. Um, and it is one of the inspiration books for Journeyathon, so you get extra points if you read an inspiration book. Um, so this has inspired the Water Pathway. I am so excited to continue with this series and read the second book, which is Portraits and Poisons, but I don't own it, but I want to, so I'm not borrowing it from the library, I want to own it. Again, have to make sure I finish my Read What Your Own Challenge first before I can buy it. So this is also getting into the mix as well. Oh dear. Okay, let's go get a spinner and spin. Now, for some reason, I thought I had a spinner that was <laughs> one to four. Turns out I don't. It's one to six. However, I'm just going to re-spin. If it lands on a one or a four, I'm just re-spinning it. So if it lands on a two, it's going to be Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. Three will be on Yekka and the Rise of the Rebels. Five will be the Crackle Dawn Dragon. And six will be Lizzie and Belle Mysteries, Portrait and Poison. So let's go in closer to the spinner and see what we get. Please work. Okay, it's spinning and we have four. So we're spinning again. And it's three. So it is on Yekka. Amazing. Amazing. So my third choice in the pile of possibilities is on Yekka and the Rise of the Rebels. And I am so excited to read this book. It is middle grade, um, 
fantasy, sort of slightly superhero-ish fantasy. Um, these children are at this school in Nigeria and they have powers that they are being taught to manage and there is stuff going on outside the school and that's all I'm going to say because anything else would be spoilers but Onyeka's power is her magical hair and on the cover she has it all flowing out above her and the title is all done in her hair and it looks amazing. Let's do roll number four. So roll number four it is a five again. So one, two, three, four, five. We've hit a lucky ladder. Here we go. Whoop. We are on the second square now. So let's go and see what lucky ladder we're going to get. So here we go. Lucky ladder cards. And I am shuffling. I don't know why I'm looking worried because all of them are going to be nice. So we'll just see what it is. So I'm pulling out this card. Uh, it's a beagle! I'm so excited! It's a beagle. I've got a happy beagle. I have been so excited <laughs> to get this book. Um, it's one that was going to be the next one that I was hoping to earn and it is uh, The Insiders by Mark Oshiro. Um, Mark Oshiro is an author I've been really wanting to read from for a long time. Um, I've heard really good things about his YA books, Anger is a Gift. Um, it's, uh, really, I can't, I can't <laughs> I'm going to do a terrible job of describing it, but Anger is a Gift is, um, a book that is really highly spoken of, um, it's won awards and it sounds awesome. I really want to read that, but I also wanted to read, um, one of his middle grade books once I knew, sorry, once, um, one of their middle grade books once I knew they wrote middle grade. Um, and this came up when I was sort of looking up um, more books that were LGBTQ plus middle grade. And this is one of the ones that came up and I thought it sounded amazing. Um, it is about a boy called Hector who is being bullied um, at school um, for being gay. And this has magical realism, magical realism book involving sort of like a portal, like secret space. Um, and other characters that are sort of like struggling with similar things in being bullied and um, it is described as sort of, I've got a tagline at the top that is called um, sometimes hilarious, sometimes devastating but always full of heart. So I think it's going to be one of those books that is a really kind of like warm emotional read. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, it's also having recently read Lonely Castle in the Mirror, I think it's going to give me sort of like Lonely Castle in the Mirror vibes of people feeling like outsiders, making friends through kind of like a magical realism space. So I'm very keen to read this one. Also, um, Mark Oshiro, it has recently released a book with Rick Royden, which is um, part of the Percy Jackson world. So I definitely wanted to read something by him and read more of his stuff first before I caught up on the whole Percy Jackson saga. So I'm so keen to read this one. So I'm so excited. Thank you, Beagle. All right, fifth roll. We're now on the second square. So I'm adding a second dice. Okay, we have a, you can't see it all. <laughs> we have, woo, there we go, a five and a two. So that is seven and we're still going and anti-clockwise which way around anti-clockwise was for a moment there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we have green, which is another 30 second prompt. Okay. <laughs> Horrible moment there where I thought, my goodness, I didn't press record, but I did, so it's fine. Okay, we're back to 30 second prompting. <laughs> Time to pick another one from the prompt cards. <sighs> okay, okay, brain, it's fine, it's fine. 29, 8, 9, 10, go. Okay, it is an epic book. Okay, what book feels epic? Percy Jackson's pretty epic. Um, uh, uh, Ryan Loss could feel quite epic because it's like a space. Um, oh, oh, I want this one. I want this one. I want to read Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor. Yes, <laughs> that took me 20 seconds. Woohoo, awesome. Um, so this is... <laughs> Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor, and it is by Ziren J. Zhao. 
so Zero and Jaisal wrote The Iron Widow, um, which is a YA sci-fi, and this is a middle grade fantasy, and it sounds really epic. Um, it involves um, a boy who is the descendant of the first emperor of China, and the emperor is back from the dead, and he needs Zack's help to battle mythological creatures. So it sounds really fun. I really enjoyed Sarah J's Al's writing um, and storytelling in Iron Widow. So I'm keen to see what the middle grade is like. Okay, next roll. Rolling the dice again. We have a ooh, three, there we go, three and a four. It is seven again. So let's move another seven anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is blue. We are at the top of the ladder, not the bottom. So it is blue, which I believe is another series spin. Um, yes, it is. So we're going to do that then. So this time it's a bit simpler. So if it lands on a one or two, it will be Crackle Dawn. A three or four, it will be Poison and Portraits. And a five or six, and it will be Percy Jackson. So here we go. We have, oh, it is Crackle Dawn Dragon by Abby Elphinstone because it's landed on a two. So here is my buddy read, the only buddy read I have planned for this month. Um, and that is Abby Elphinstone's The Crackle Dawn Dragon, which is the fourth book in the Unmapped Chronicles. So Vidania and I have read the first three books um, and so we're excited to read this one. I don't know if this is a fourth and final one purely because, have we got a map in here? Oh we do but it's it's just of um, Crackle Dawn. Um, so there are four kingdoms. We started off in Rumble Star, we then had an adventure in Jungle Drop and we had a prequel in Crackle Dawn. So this is children from our world going to Crackle Dawn, which is what this one's about. And we haven't had a book from, I think it's something to do with Silver? Silver Top, possibly? There's an area of the world we haven't had a book once. So I feel you can't just have a magical land and not visit it, unless they visit it in here, but there is no map of it. So I feel there should be a fifth book at some point in this series, but we will see. But I've been really enjoying those and really enjoying buddy reading them with Vidania. So that is how many books? One, two, three. That is six books. I have got two more to choose for my pile of possibilities. So my game, my rules. We've had two 30 second prompts and two series spin. Not doing it anymore. I want a theme card. <laughs> so if we land on either of those again, I'm just going to roll again because I don't want to do them anymore. My game, my rules. Okay, we have got a nine. So it's... Can I do it? Four and five. So we are moving anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It is blue. So I'm not doing a series spin. I'm rolling again, but I'll just do one dice. Okay, so rolling the purple dice. Purple dice has landed on a three, which was that one? One, two. One, two, three. It's a green. Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Also green. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Siri, 30 second prompt. I will do. We've, we've had it several times. I will do the 30 second prompt, um, but I'm not doing another series spin. We'll leave it at that. So I'm here. I'm gonna, I'll go back to the first green. Let's go back to the first green. I will. I will take it. You like the 30 second prompt anyway, so let's do that one. Okay, so we're doing the 30 second prompt and after this one, I'm just going to do a theme card because that was the other one you voted for, so it will just make it more fun. So 30 second prompt and then a theme card. Right, <laughs> 34, 19, 20, I've chosen this one and it is a book with an animal companion. Okay, what has an animal companion? What has an uh, Alice in Wonderland is a possibility. I'm okay for time. Um, yeah, okay, cool. It's Alice in Wonderland. I can't read it, but I've chosen Alice in Wonderland and that's totally fine. Um, 
Some people might argue that the white rabbit's not exactly a companion, but I feel it's very much part of the story and they're an animal. So I'm still gonna say that it counts. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it counts. I'm saying the white rabbit counts as an animal companion. It's fine. It's technically like a humanoid character. I'm now questioning myself. Does it count? Um, but I don't actually know what other books I have that I know definitely have an animal companion in them because I don't know a huge amount about them. Um, so this is the best I have. <laughs> this is what we're going for. This is the animal companion. The White Rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, which if you were not aware, is a classic children's book. Also one of the books um, on the inspiration books in the Journeyathon, so extra points for reading this one. Um, and I'm very excited. I haven't read from either of my two copies of Alice in Wonderland. I read from my mum's copy when I was a child and have not reread it. So this is going to be a good reread for me and had to happen at some point, really. Okay, so officially, this is the final prompt, although I'm not doing a roll for it. The final prompt for my pile of possibilities is theme card, just because we haven't done it yet. And I was clearly forcing myself to try and get it on the board there um, until I admitted defeat. So theme card, let's do this. I'm gonna shuffle, I'm gonna shuffle and then we'll see what the final book on here is going to be. I've got this one and it is, oh, oh, haha, <laughs> the one I was giving in as an example for, fire or flames on the cover. And I'm suddenly wondering, is that something I have? <laughs> or possibly, um, so let's have a little look. Okay, there is no fire or flames on when stars are scattered. A kind of spark, I feel there's kind of glowy embers, but I don't think it can count as fire or flames. And I think this, yeah, okay, Battle of the Labyrinth counts. So I have here Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Royden, which is the fourth book in Percy Jackson. And there is this kind of like menacing Greek creature here that looks like it's trying to tear down this labyrinth. And we see lots of like, there's fire under the helmet and there's flames across. So there we go. That counts as my final book in my pile of possibilities. Okay, so my pile of possibilities for my July TBR is um, A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This was the map mashup of a magical book and a book featuring a magical artifact. We then have my placeholder, Felix is being my placeholder for Jamie, um, which is a contemporary book by L.D. Lipinski. And that was for Expanding My Horizons, reading a book with an LGBTQ plus protagonist or own voice author. In this case, both. Then I did a series spin and spun for Onyeka, the second book in the Onyeka series, Onyeka and the Rise of the Rebels by Tolo Okuguru. I then got a Fiegel and from under my bed I got out The Insiders by Mark Osiro, um, which is a uh, magical realism. I then did a 30 second prompt and got an epic book and chose Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Ziran J. Zhao, which is a fantasy book. I then did another series spin and got a, whoop, another fantasy book, which is The Crackle Dawn Dragon by Abby Elphinstone. I then pulled out the dubious Animal Companion and chose Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, which is a classic fantasy. And finally, I got a theme card, which was Fire and Flames and chose um, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. So here we go. Here's my pile of possibilities. Ta-da! Oh, let's try again. There, there we go. I can hold them. So like I said, not going to be reading all of these. But if I read, I need to read four of these and also put them on story graph and have six to eight books read in total for the month of July with all of the things being on story graph for me to get a reward in September. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at what my TBR could look like um, and see how many of these books fit the following prompts on Journeyathon. Um, so for Journeyathon, uh, what I'm hoping to do is try and mood read it a little bit. So starting and following the map and kind of what do I feel like reading at this moment in time 
but also sticking to the prompts as well. So I'm not going to try and read with a plan. I'm going to try and park plans and try mood reading a little bit more. But I am going to go through the books and see what prompts they will fit. Um, but I'm not going to do all of them because we've got 19 prompts, but I'm going to focus on the air path because I think that is the most realistic for me. So by um, traveling via broomstick <laughs> in the sky, um, I hope to go from Prologton, the Smoky Mushroom, Whittleway Village, the Grumbies, and then finally to the City of Party. So we don't need to worry about City of Party because it's just read a middle grade. Done. Um, but let's see if there's any with transport on the cover. So we have got people running here. So they are clearly running. That counts as does Alice in Wonderland. Crackle Dawn Dragon, we've got people on a dragon. Definitely counts as a mode of transport. Um, these characters are stationary, so Dragon Emperor doesn't count. More people running for the insiders. Um, I would say again, the Onyeka and her friend are leaping and stationary rather than uh, moving, so that doesn't count. Jamie is also stationary on the front cover. Um, they are on the roof with some friends and there was a crowd in front of them. Um, but a sprinkle of sorcery, you have a boat, which is the mode of transport on the cover. So I have got five options for Prologtum. Um, for the smoky mushroom, for air travel, I think it was disaster on the cover. Um, I would just check. Yes, it is a book with a disaster on the cover. So we want a catastrophe on the cover. Um, this boat looks a bit wrecked. Um, it's looking a bit battered. It looks like it's been hit by lightning. I'd say if you're losing your boat, that's a bit of a catastrophe. So that would count. And I think the only other one that I felt is kind of catastrophic is uh, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. I mean, having a giant Greek person in flames sort of making their way towards you to possibly end your life feels pretty catastrophic to me. So two options for that. Um, and then we come to Whittleaway Village, and I think it's a recent purchase in Whittleaway Village. So again, I'm just going to check my notes. Uh, yeah, a recent purchase. Um, so the Insiders definitely works for that, and um, I'm going to buy Jamie, so that would work. Um, Onyeka would work because I've recently got Onyeka, I recently earned her. Uh, the rest I've had for ages or their library books. So three options for that one, but doing well so far. It's it's definitely very flexible, so that works. I'm um, pretty sure the Grombies via air was magical. Because um, I think that was one of the ones that I chose for the actual uh, prompt. Yeah, read a magical book. So I've been as most of these are fantasy. That is all of them, um, including uh, the insiders because it has an element of magic. It's so everything apart from Jamie uh, would count for reading a magical book. <laughs> oh, what could my favourite genre be? Could it possibly be fantasy? I think so. Yeah, and then that takes us to a City Party. So I am sorted for following that path. I have many, 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 many options. Um, I don't know if I'm going to necessarily follow it. I might choose a different way to get to the Smoky Mushroom and then air travel it to Whittleway Village. Um, um, but then again, from Whittleway Village, I've got three options on how to get to the Grumbies. So it all depends on what I feel like reading at the time. And at the Grumbies, I then might decide if I have read, that would be one, two, three, yeah. So if on my way to the Grumbies, I might decide that if I have, if I am nearly there by the end of the first week, then I probably might take a detour to um, Sanchez Artistic, Artistic Port and possibly Camp Launchpad um, and then the City of Party um, to see, see if I can fit a couple of other ones on. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have um, come across any of these middle grade books and are also excited for them or recommend them. Um, and let me know what you'll be reading in July. Are you going to be taking part in any other readathons? I know there is Jane Austen July, it's a very popular one. 
Um, so let me know. And if you're taking part in Journeyathon, I absolutely would love to hear from you. Um, if you want to get involved, then it is never too late. Just join in with us. Um, check out the announcement video. And I do have a Discord, which is kind of more devoted to middle grade. So um, we have a lot of chats on there and there is a whole section on Journeyathon. But also keep your eye on my community um, section as well because I'm going to be posting Journeyathon related content on there a lot. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy reading.